Alrighty, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDG94, back with another reaction video. Today, we're going to react to Prim's Hood Cinema Tales from the Hood. Without further ado, let's get into it. Yes, sir. This is definitely a hood classic. It's a hood classic, man. This is definitely a hood classic. I love the message behind it and everything. What? The, the it shit. starts off with these three the niggas. Shit. They up to no good, probably. Man, it's where's Stacey the shit? from the wood, <laughs> Chicago from Poetic Justice. Me, and deep. this one nigga, I in swear, man, this nigga in hella hood movies. I said that shit hella times. This nigga in so many movies, I'm about to just start calling him his regular name. Samuel Monroe Jr. is his name. It's got no type of ring to it. I'm not gonna call him that shit. <laughs> Apparently, whoever lives in this spooky house came up on some drugs, and now these niggas are planning to buy or sell <laughs> said drugs. Stacy and Chicago are kind of worried about going into the house, because it looks scary. It's it's scary house. The one, yo, the ball, yo, he's like, fuck that. We big gangster. We do gangster things. Both of y'all need to shut the fuck up, all right? He's usually the go-hard nigga in whatever movie he's into. That nigga's scary by himself, bro. That's my tales from the hood. Imagine saying Samuel Monroe Jr. in the mirror three times and he come shoot your house out. I don't know. Right. Well, for damn motherfucker, I'm <laughs> with you. You kill his ass. I'm supposed to kill something that's already dead, man. Yeah, like some refried beans or some shit. Why the fuck you gonna refry some beans, man? Why not just fry that shit right the first time? You stupid! Oh, geez, I'm fucking what the fuck? That shit kind of really scary. This nigga kind of terrifying. RP. For you, boy. RP to the home. It turns out this house is actually a mortuary, I think. That creepy nigga is a mortician. I'm a mortician. Also, this nigga named Clarence Williams, in case you didn't know. Clarence Williams the third. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen him in something. He's scary. He a yes, all-star. The mortician explains that he found some drugs in an alley and is wanting to sell them. And to those of you that know this, yes, his hair does look like this in every movie. It's not just this movie. This nigga's scary. You got the money. You get it when we get the shit. The shit. <laughs> the shit. Before he hands over the drugs, he wants the boys to listen to his scary, spooky stories. He starts pulling out dead people and explaining what happened to him. I don't know. Stacy seems pretty interested. Cool. Hey, so what happened to him? But your boy Samuel Monroe Jr., he is not interested. Let's just get the shit. You'll get the shit. You'll It'll be knee deep in the, the shit. shit. <laughs> There's so much. I couldn't even lift it all myself. The first story is about a politician. He is a strong black man and he's cleaning up the streets or something. He seems to be targeting corrupt law enforcement. He sees all the cops all around doing all the dirty all around. He don't like that. You getting off on uh, destroying good cops lives? Hmm? I've got nothing against good cops, but I will see lowlife scum like you run out of the department. You shut the fuck up. Honestly, this shit is scary enough by itself. This should probably really be happening. This is a crazy world we live in, bro. The cops end up killing a politician guy and covering it up. They shoot him up with heroin and blow his car into the harbor. It's pretty cool. These guys are the coolest. Look at this nigga. He's just the coolest, right? Clarence, the rookie cop, sees everything and he's visibly upset about it. He don't like that. The other cops are just kind of like... And after that night, the politician nigga legacy is ruined. Everybody think he like heroin now and the crooked cops get away with all the dirty. It's later now and Clarence... He's not doing too good. He drinking 40s and he got a beard and shit. He hasn't been keeping up on his flat top, really. <laughs> He's not doing anything. He's really fucking with his head. He eventually starts hearing voices and shit. Well, not voices. I guess it's only the one voice. It's the politician nigga voice. Bring them to me. Clarence listens to the voices right here. and calls up movie. his old cop homies to have them meet him at the graveyard. The fuck you call us out here for, huh? Huh? I thought the least we could do is pay our respects. What do you mean? Pay respects. The cops agree to go see the politician dude's grave to pay respect, but honestly, they do a pretty bad job. 
I won't piss on his grave. <laughs> Way to go, Strong. That's, that's pretty cool. Come on. The zombie man chased the cops all through the hood. They scared of him. The makeup on the zombie man looks not that bad, actually. I mean, it's not that good, but it's kind of creepy in like a nightmare sort of way. Yeah. yeah. They crash the car, and then they all like, Dang, we kill him. Why we kill him? He crashes the car, swerving away from the zombie, by the way. Like, I know he magic and all, but I feel like I would have at least tried to hit him. I don't know. I feel like cars are really strong. It's worth at least one shot. It might buy you some time. He is magic, though, so you never know. Oh, shit, bars. Some points, we're in the four tours. <laughs> The last cop blows the zombie up, but not really. Then he gets chased down an alley, and the zombie nigga uses his telekinesis powers that he has, apparently. He picks up a bunch of dirty needles from the ground and shoots him at this nigga. You get it? Because he shot him with the needle and killed him. It's going around, coming around, everybody coming around. The zombie uses the needles to pin the cop nigga up to the wall in a T-pose like Jesus. Then proceeds to turn this nigga into a painting. And also, he has a jar of steaming jelly shit inside of him, powering him up, it seems. That's a lot of things happening. It's kind of too much to explain. I think that was a crack pipe. Setup, so they don't explain it anything. I think that's what it was. I think it was a crack pipe, bro. I think, I think he was being powered by a crack pipe or something like that. It's, it's a deep message. It's very deep, bro. I can't really get into it, but it's really deep, bro. Like his his body was being his body was being powered by a crack pipe. It was a really deep message behind it, bro. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get back into it though. It's real deep, bro. It's real deep. The next story is about the little nigga from Soul. I might do another breakdown of this movie because right now we just doing Prim. Prim don't really break these movies down. He just make fun of them for y'all entertainment. But I might do like a breakdown. Cause it is, it is a lot of videos out there that break this down and really like inform you on what the fuck is going on. So yeah, we, we could do that in the near future, but yeah, for right now, let's just keep it prim right now. Food. He got a monster in his house or something, which sucks. Cause he fucking hates monsters. This shit was so sad. He gets in a fight at school with this light skin nigga and his teacher takes him to the nurse. The nurse tells the teacher that the kid is fine, but he's got a black eye that's not from the fight. Watcher, if you tell me and Nurse Parchman, it'll just be our little secret, okay? The monster. Needless to say, nobody believes his dumbass, and the monster keeps coming back. One of Soul Food Kid's classmates suggests he draws a <laughs> picture of the monster, then destroys it, then he won't be scared of it no more? I don't think but drawing these pictures is really answer to your problem bro you don't even know what you're talking about sinbad shut your bitch ass up for i fry you the fuck up in here boy that's not Fucking sinbad Chief just starting out dreads ass nigga motherfuckers got dockers on pulled all the way up as far as they can go then you're <laughs> wearing a fucking striped polka dot ensemble and shit you might as yeah, well draw this tie, nigga whole outfit match, on a piece bro. of paper and ball that shit up Soulful Kid also draws the light-skinned nigga that beat his ass earlier. He draws him and then he balls him up and what do you know? It fucking works, Sinbad. How do you break both arms and legs? Boy must have had weak bones. <laughs> the teacher goes to Soulful Boy's house and talks to his mom. He brings up the monster and his mom gets in his ass. It's not a good situation. So cool fit. So cool fit. So cool fit. Soul food Soul kid. Food kid. Soul Bro, food what the kid. Fuck? I can't talk. Soul food kids stepdad jesus the stepdad comes home and he's like a dickhead or something so what kind of problem are we talking about this monster that he says is in the house i'll talk to him sinbad leaves and the stepdad goes and talks to his family and by talks to his family i mean he beats the shit out of his whole family that's ignorant the teacher comes back after hearing all the talking and decides he wants to help the monster talks to everybody at the same time for a little bit until Walter, aka Soul Cool Fit, grabs the paper and starts <laughs> balling it up. Boy must have had weak bones. <laughs> this shit ain't over yet. Cool Fit and his mom and his teacher watch as the monster burns and they live happily ever after. Bro, turn the stove off. Y'all gonna set the house on fire. Y'all gonna be burnt up with him. 
The next story is the last story, is what I was thinking when I was watching it. It is not actually, though. There's four stories. But this doll, it's a way station for lost souls. What? This doll is a place for the soul to survive. You for real? Yes! The third story is about another evil white man getting what's coming to him. This time he a racist politician. He moving into some old house. Everybody mad at him. Can anything be done? Well, there are certain things that we plan to do. There ain't That's nothing we need to do. The souls are gonna make him pay. They're gonna make him pay for being a Miss Cop was the keeper of the souls. And now there's The house used to be an old slave plantation, apparently. And also some other stuff happened. After the Civil War, the man who owned this plantation, the old man snapped. Turned into a massacre. Hundreds of slaves. Legend is she transferred the souls of the slaves into little dolls. Negro dolls. Scary doll stuff starts to happen to him, and he's all like, <laughs> He's chasing the doll around and trying to kill it, as opposed to, I don't know, getting the fuck out of there, maybe? Facts. I mean, he's mad, though. He's so mad that he smacks the painting of the lady in the face with the American flag. <laughs> After that super intense, super real looking fight, the racist guy wins and he blows the doll up and shit. He goes back into the house and it's over and he wins now. Sick of night, you little piece of black shit. Oh, Yeah, all that that is time. some fine shotgun skills you got there, bro. I like the way he drops all the shells as the doll is charging towards him, especially since he already loaded it perfectly. Sick of night, you little piece of black shit. And also, you should have loaded it before you went to go investigate whatever noise or whatever you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> so they all come out to painting and they all look like Y and W Melly and they kill him. Really? Next story. Come on, bro. Oh, the shit. The shit. <laughs> the last guy is actually a nigga the three main characters know from around the way. He got crazy ass sideburns and he definitely is the nigga from Malaysia. Just in case you were wondering. He rolls up to some nigga he don't like and smokes him. Like out of nowhere, R. three Peter niggas Rick, come Ricky out the house Williams and too. shoot him before he can get away. Do you want me to shoot your ass, motherfucker? Man, fuck this, man. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me look at this yet. I wonder how many homies he's a pimp to The cops arrive and shoot the three niggas before they finish him off. And now everybody dead, except for Hakeem. He survives and he goes to prison and he's chilling. Some lady comes up to him and takes him to spooky prison though. Apparently it's a new type of rehabilitation thing. She says if he completes it, he can get out or some shit. I don't know. Consent to behavioral modification and you'll be out on the street in no time. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, bro. Come on, man. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. What the fuck? 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 Come join my army. Those guys you killed? What color were they? Huh? Nothing. That same sentiment from yep. the cellmate guy is hammered in more by a bunch of tests and experiments. He's shown a bunch of nigger violence with a bunch of white supremacy violence. I mean, I get it. And it's a fair comparison, but this part just too long, bro. That's ignorant. The next experiment, he's in a sensory deprivation type of shit. Sensory what? He sees all the people he killed, and I'm kind of bored at this point. It's not even supposed to be scary, I'm sure. And honestly, spoiler alert, it's not even real. It's all in his head, and he's actually still on the ground with the three niggas over top of him. What a twist, right? Except not really, because they flat out lied to us by showing us something that didn't happen. Like, what was that? He imagined the cops pulling up and saving him? It feels cheap no matter how you spin it. <laughs> One less nigga. Oh, oh, fuck it.
Yeah, so it turns out the three niggas who shot Hakeem were actually the three main niggas the whole time. What a twist, right? Except not really, because you can kind of see their faces the whole time. Also, the fact that the movie even went out of his way to try to fucking hide their faces, that gives it away. Yeah. Now we don't get the shit. <laughs> it's in the coffins. About fucking time! Holy shit! What the f***? Yes! Ain't no funeral! Welcome to hell! <laughs> well, that's the end, boys and girls. They was in hell the whole time. This is just a fucking devil fucking with him, I guess. There's a zombie man and a balled up paper man. I like it. I wouldn't call it scary, and I was super high when I was watching it. But it's weird and twisted in a way that makes you feel uneasy. It's like the polar opposite of Leprechaun in the Hood. They seem like they took their time with this movie. The writing is pretty good for the most part in most of the tales, and the performances are nice and over the top when they need to be. Yeah. Definitely like some Twilight Zone vibes going on. The cinematography is kind of flat. It's got really no style to it. It's just kind of standard. Kind of makes the movie look old, you know? I and that's kind of sad considering the fact that Spike Lee was behind the scenes on this. It wasn't his movie technically, but he was behind the scenes on this. He did have like some directive input on this movie as well, which is why he's credited for this movie. And you know, and you know, Spike Lee does have great cinema photography, but you know, for it to not be in this one and to make it, I guess it was because of the budget. I, I do remember this having a very low budget behind it because it was one of them uh, it was one of them uh, movies where they was trying to like give a message out there a, it was a black movie but it had a message behind it and you know them type of movies they don't get no they don't get good budgets you know what I'm saying but if it does good the, the, they, hey, they, they fall back and then they try to be like, then they try to make a fucking sequel and then the sequel be fucking ass. But anyways, though. No. I mean, some of the scary parts are kind of shot cool, but overall, <coughs> it's, it's whatever. What? The individual stories, like the actual <coughs> tales, are super interesting. They're like nightmares almost. The effects and the makeup definitely give it a sort of surreal, like uncanny nightmares. type of vibe. Like with the dolls, it looks like they use some sort of stop motion animation type shit. And it doesn't look that good, but it's still creepy as shit. Maybe yeah. even more so because of yeah, it. Like it looks crazy, like some bro. nightmare shit. Don't get me wrong though, some of this shit just looks bad. Uh, fun facts, the dark skinned nigga that plays Chicago is Joe Torrey, is Guy Torrey's brother. That makes sense, they look alike. What? Also, I saw this movie no when shit. I was super young. I kept having glimpses of it in my head. I had to be like four or five. I didn't know whether it was real or not. I thought it was some shit I made up in a dream, maybe. Like, I remember nigga getting balled up in, like, paper. And I remember the little niggas coming out the paint and shit. That shit kind of fucked me up. I didn't realize it was from a movie till, like, this year. Like, I would have nightmares about that shit. Niggas getting balled up and shit, like, paper. That shit was scary. Who the fuck let me watch that shit? Thank you for watching. Join me next time, next story time, where we dive into another story next time. Make sure to subscribe and watch my other shits. Okay, and that's it. It's over. <laughs> I remember the first time I watched this movie, I was like seven years old. I thought this shit was going to be scary. Turns out this shit was just one of them, uh, them black movies that had a message behind it. So it was kind of like... It, I ain't gonna lie, I was scared of the dog part. The dog part scared me, but at the same time, I was like, I ain't no racist white guy. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> that shit scared the fuck out of one of my friends, though, because he was white, and he felt like the white, he felt like them black slave dogs gonna get him. Because white people, because white people, because they that's when they was trying to teach us about uh, slavery and shit like that. They didn't show us this movie in school, though. They didn't show us this movie in school. We saw this movie on some uh on some uh sleepover shit, bruh. On some sleepover shit. Real talk. I know y'all probably like you was a little boy sleeping over at another boy's house. Man, come on, man. We was kids, bro. It ain't even like that, bro. We was kids, bro. I was seven years old. Shut the fuck out. But anyways, though. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah, I watched this when I was seven. The dog part was the only part that got me, bruh. Every other part, it just seemed like a, uh, it just seemed like a, 
it just seemed like, you know, because I come from the environment, so I understand it completely. And that's crazy being seven years old and understanding all this shit that's going on. But, you know, it is what it is. That's just go about do it for this what I see on the next video till then. Peace out.